Praise the Lord. God bless y'all, brothers and sisters in Christ. Brother Aaron here. Um, just got done tonight with a short trip to DFW, four days. The Lord had blessed me with some work, with some painting. We were able to do some evangelism outside the Kenneth Copeland Believers Convention and able to fellowship with the brethren for a couple of days as well. Go out there and preach. And uh, I was uploading this clip right here, and I wanted to make this short video before it to kind of give context of this video. Because uh, I know that there's Pharisees that watch this page all the time, and they're trying to find any little thing wrong with the way we preach or evangelize or about this ministry so they can come against it. So i got hundreds of videos I need to upload. I'm going to start working on them and uploading them to this channel. And some of them are going to make little short clips like this before the video so you can get context out of the clips. That way you're not making an unrighteous judgment. You get to kind of get a better understanding of what went on. Sometimes we got multiple cameras filming and uh, the way we edit the videos and, and tie them in together, it may look like they're chopped up or stuff taken out of them, but that's not the case. So particularly in this clip, we had a sister in Christ. She was filming from her phone. And that's why I took a portion of the first clip out. And then I had turned on my recording afterwards and, and they tied in together. But this man that came up in this video right here, he was very angry at one of the signs that we had uh, about the rich man how it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. He immediately came up, got offended by the sign. He was telling Sister Shannon that the sign was not the truth. He was being prideful, saying that he knew the Bible more than us. He reads it, this and that. And then eventually he ended up flipping me off, giving me the middle finger, uh, not only one time, but multiple times with two middle fingers. And then he came back afterwards and talked about like how he would have, Threw me on the ground and laid me out some wicked stuff. Now, uh, keep in mind, this guy did come up probably about an hour later and he did apologize. Praise God. He apologized several times. Uh, but then I don't believe it was truly sincere because then he tried to give us counsel on who we should preach to, that we should preach to the lost people, people that aren't Christians. And I was explaining to him how we believe that the people going inside this event are actually lost and they need Christ too as well. Cause they're believing in the false Jesus. And he was immediately defensive and he started uh, trying to turn the finger on us kind of like the Pharisees do saying, who do y'all preach to? Do you only preach to these events? And, and all these types of wicked, wicked accusations, just like the Pharisees, just like the religious crowd, the uh, phony Christians. He, and he was telling us how he was preaching to people for four hours before the event at the bars and uh, to different types of people. And that's why I called him out on this hypocrisy. Uh, I don't believe anyone can have the spirit of God and go out and preach to people for four hours and then flip off someone right after. That's a, uh, that's what a false convert does. That's not what a true believer in Christ. I can understand people getting in the flesh, but to give someone the middle finger multiple times and to threaten them. And then you are supposedly preaching the gospel to the lost four hours before that's hypocrisy. So I, I started to expose that and he got mad and um, he was telling, he kept saying that he apologized, which he did. But then he started using God's grace as a license of sin, saying that he can just do this and that and ask for forgiveness. Now, God is willing to forgive us if we do truly repent, but his grace is not a license of sin. His grace teaches us not to sin. So please pray for this man. He's deceived. Now, he did say something about he doesn't, he's not part of Kenneth Copeland's uh, ministry. His church goes there and that's why he was there. He's saying something to that effect. But at the same time, we all have a free will choice. If I was part of a fellowship and they tried to go to this false teachers conference, I would not go. I would make the choice not to go. And we can't blame other people. We can't be like Adam and Eve. We can't blame other people for our sinful actions. So the, ultimately, the guy had a free will choice to not go. And uh, and God was warning him through us as well that they were false teachers. And he immediately got upset. And that's what happens out there on the streets. The religious get upset when you tell them the truth, just like the Pharisees. They get upset when you tell them the truth and they plot against you. They try to turn things around against you and find anything that they can to uh, to lie about your testimony, to slander your name. But God will deal with those Pharisees accordingly. I've seen it happen already in my walk with the Lord. I've seen God deal with people that come against this ministry. I've seen God deal with people that slander me or my wife or other believers He's uh, cursed them. He's cursed their marriages. He's cursed their finances. He's cursed their life. And I believe that he's going to continue to bring tribulation to those people's lives until they come to repentance. And of course, we never want to uh, 
wish curses upon people's lives. We don't rejoice when our enemy falls, but we know that God is a righteous God and he, vengeance is his. So God does take care of his children. So please pray for this man in this video. I didn't get his name. Um, I believe he was upset because he was truly being deceived by these false teachers. And uh, he was upset at this sign. I'm going to send uh, the picture of the sign is going to be right here as the cover picture of the video. And he was upset at the scriptures. And uh, Jesus says, blessed is he who is not offended in me, offended in his words. So please pray for this man. Continue to pray for us as we go forth and do the Lord's will and keep our hands to the plow. If you want to join us in the fight to do God's will, uh, send me an email. Send me a message. You, you're open. We're open for fellowship evangelism, but one mind, one accord is important in doctrine. We believe that it's crucial. The apostles were in one mind, one accord doing God's will. And we're open to study out any topic in any scriptures with anyone and to extend grace to those that are learning and new in Christ. But we won't compromise on doctrine. God bless y'all. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Aaron, please pray for this man as you watch this clip. He's very angry and upset at the preaching of God's word and the signs. He's lost and deceived. And this is just one of the few, one of the many people actually that were upset at the preaching because they want their ears tickled and we won't tickle their ears. We won't water down the truth of God's word. Praise the Lord. Pray for this man and his soul and the people that heard the truth. We are wrong for the things of this world. We want you to follow the Jesus of the Bible. And the Jesus of the Bible says this. He says in Matthew 6 that no man can serve two masters. No man can serve wow, two masters. You believe the precious words of Jesus Christ? Jesus said to not store your treasures here on earth, but rather store them in heaven. So we come out here today for our Texas camp for the disciples to call you to repentance. We come out here because like we care trip? about your soul. We care enough to tell you the truth. We love you. It's in scripture, sir. Kenneth Copeland is a devil. Yeah. He said it's, Jesus okay. was born out of the I know my world. Do you believe that? Right yes, it is, sir. Do you sir. believe that Jesus was born out of the right. things of hell? That's what Kenneth Copeland preached. I know what you're talking about. Kenneth Copeland said that know, God was right? the biggest failure of the Bible. Do you believe that God was the biggest failure? Yeah, you're wicked, sir. You give me the middle finger and you're going inside of you. been about God? You're a wicked devil, man. You need to repent. Jesus. You need to get right with God, man. You say you're, you say you're right with God, give me the middle finger. Sir, you need to get right with the Lord, man. Oh, Jesus is this is the fruit of this ministry right here. You got this man over here giving me the middle finger, claiming to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He came over here and gave me the middle finger, and he's claiming to be a follower of Jesus. Is that what Jesus Christ would do? Would you give someone the middle finger and then go to a conference about God? No, that's what a false prophet would do. That's what a false prophet would do. Someone that wants his ears tickled. You're going to bet for that because you love your ears tickled. You love your ears tickled. That's why. You care about your ears tickled. So you're wicked, man. You're giving me the middle finger you go to your friend about. Well, lucky I only gave you the middle finger. Because if you had met me 10 years ago, you'd be on the ground. Sir, you need to repent. You need to get right with the Lord, man. You're not right with the Lord, sir. This is the fruit of Kenneth Copeland's disciples right here. Letting the preacher of righteousness, giving him the middle finger. This is wicked. Are you going if you see that?